Let's talk about developing a powerful and memorable elevator pitch, everyone. That's why you are here today. And these are the things I want to talk about. I'll talk about what a pitch actually is and what, what is its purpose. You know, we talk about elevator pitches. Then the question is, why is it called an elevator pitch? What does it really do for us? I'll talk about the things you should be including in your pitch. We'll talk about the different situations to use your elevator pitch. And you will notice I put in plurals over here. That could be a hint to you. I'll talk about the different types of pitches because they vary as to what its use is and what type is. We'll talk about the basic items you should have on the pitch, how many pitches you should need. And I could tell you based upon this over here, it's more than one. We'll go about how to create a pitch. I'll give you some samples of pitches, how to deliver the pitch, and then, which hopefully we have time for, I'll let you construct a pitch. Now, I know some of you have spent days and hours you know, trying to construct a pitch. I can tell you that after you go through this session, you could generally create a pretty powerful elevator pitch in under three minutes. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll just wrap it up. If you have any questions during the presentation, if I'm on a, one of the slides, just shout it out. If it's something else not on the slide, just put it in the uh, chat preface it with the word question and uh, Joyce will then uh, we'll have a point where Joyce then could go through it and uh, we'll have some time to answer the questions. Okay, let's talk about a pitch and what what is its purpose? The pitch the pitch is a short and persuasive speech really you use to introduce yourself, promote your product or your company if you want, or an idea. The key words here are short and persuasive. Now what happens, the pitch, the pitch gives a listener an impression on who you are, what you do, and most important, what is your value to them? Not to you. Once again, it's like your resume. You write your resume for the reader, not for you. In this case, you make you a pitch to the listener and it's the how the listener receives it which is most important <clears throat> the purpose of the pitch really is to you know quickly and clearly explain a concept and at the same time you know spark a person's interest to listen to you and want to have another meeting with you to want to find out more details about what's going on what you do what you offer Okay, so it really is to set up the situation to have an in-depth conversation with an individual either now or later. That's what it's all about. And it's short and persuasive. Okay, you deliver it fairly quickly, but clearly. The most important part of it is the value to the listener on what you do. Things to include in your pitch. Well, you try to get an attention getter, who you are and why you are special. Okay. To spark someone's curiosity, 
in what you do to solve problems and what are the problems that you solve. It shows why you are unique. What makes you different than the other people in the room? Why should a person choose you as opposed to the person next to you? <clears throat> what makes you different? What makes you unique? And it's, you know, starts a conversation. Okay. You want to engage people. Now, um, you can create a pitch where it starts off with a question. We'll show that as we go through it. And really, <clears throat> the main part of this pitch today um, is to get to the next step. So you could have an in-depth conversation and explore other possibilities where you could help someone else. You know, when we used to meet together, it's a matter of you know leaving your business card or handing out your business card to somebody. Today, being remote, as most of us are, <clears throat> you're really not exchanging business cards, but it's your pitch that really becomes your calling card. To, you know, create interest so you'll have another meeting. Now, you know, we look at the question is, when do you use an, an elevator pitch? Okay. Well, we all feel right now in where we are, well, it's when you're at these networking meetings. That's when we use it. Well, more than that, it's generally in a social setting. You can do it when you're at a party or, you know, when you're in a grocery line, when you just meet people. You know, and that wonderful question, well, tell me a bit about yourself. And your pitch at that time Will be in that social setting on who you do, what you do, who you are, what you do, and what you value. Uh, it's also in business. When you are introduced to new clients, new suppliers, and even when you are introduced to new employees, or you were just hired and now you introduce yourself to the employees who have been there for a while. Also, you could use your pitch at seminars, web um, professional meetings. This is the one that most people think about is a networking event and job search. But look at all the other areas where you could use your pitch. In job search, not only at networking events, <clears throat> but also recruited discussions. You know, the first time you, you, you contact a recruiter, the recruiter always asks the first question, well, tell me a bit about yourself. And that's where you could give your pitch. Another part is when you're in the interview status. When you're interviewing, once again, generally the interviewers will ask, well, tell me a bit about yourself. And that's where you could go onto your pitch. But in looking at the pitch, there are different types of pitches and they're used for different things. There's a general pitch. And this generally could be used in any situation, okay? But then there's a sales pitch, and that's generally used when you try to sell a product, okay? It's geared toward the benefits of the product with the hope that the listener will, have, will know that that benefits them. But the sales pitch is really about a product. You have your question pitch, which starts off with the question. There's also the rhyming pitch. Now we have some people, especially in my networking groups, uh, I don't think Neil's on the, the call here today, um, but Neil Banya, who's one of the FANG members, <clears throat> Neil starts off his pitch and he says, hi, I'm Neil and this is my spiel. And then he goes on after everybody chuckles 
about his what he does. Uh, there's other people that I know, Carol, <clears throat> in one of my other networking group. And Carol says, well, if you're over a barrel, come talk to Carol. So it's a little catchy, but it helps people remember who you are. And then there is the tagline pitch. And the tagline is extremely brief. It only has a few words. Um, Ron in my group years ago, uh, he ended up with his pitch. I'm Ron. I want you to know me for academia and manufacturing. I'm Ron. That was it. Well, it was pretty clear that he was involved in manufacturing and academia. And what happened was whenever any time a job leave would come for, uh, for academia or manufacturing, people would call on Ron. That's how he was known. Academia manufacturing, short and sweet. The basics for the elevator pitch, just remember this, everybody. <clears throat> An elevator pitch generally is the first impression people get of you. In the elevator, once they get this pitch, the first impression, first impressions are only given once, the first time. So it really has to be impressive. What you should be thinking about are these things why people stay up at night. And if your pitch could cover reasons why they stay up at night, these issues, people will start listening to you. And the three things that almost everyone is concerned about one time or another are the relationships they have, financial issues they may have, or health concerns they may have. These three, you weave these into your pitch, people generally will pay attention. The pitch itself, <clears throat> the way I look at it, the way I construct it, is comprised of what I call four C's and three W's. And in doing that, the four C's are this. You want to make it clear. You want to make it crystal clear on what you want. You want to make it concise. Keep it short, everybody, under 90 seconds. You want to make it consistent. I keep on repeating it and repeating it over and over. You do not necessarily have to have the same words, but you need the same concept because you do not want to be in a situation where you are delivering your pitch robotically. You want to make it somewhat conversational and you want to make it compelling. It has to be interesting for the person to listen. Now, under 90 seconds, 90 seconds, that's a long time. Or not really, it's a short time, people figure. Well, I could tell you that the reason you want to keep it short is that people's memory are really short. There can be a lot of filtering if they don't understand what you've said. The more in depth you go, the harder it is for them to concentrate and relay your message. So if you keep it short, people can remember what you say and pass it on to other people, or their antennas could go up when they hear of positions that meet your criteria. If you have it more than 90 seconds, people forget part of it, and they also then filter what you've said. It's the old telephone game we used to play when we were kids. Especially you go into grammar school on a Monday and the teacher would say, okay, Johnny, tell Susan 
what you did this weekend, whisper in our ear. And Johnny whispers to Susan. And then Susan whispers to Jimmy. And then Jimmy whispers to Johnny. And then Johnny whispered to Carol. And then the teacher says, okay, Carol, what did Johnny do this weekend? And Carol will say it and Johnny will say, that's not what I did. Because as everyone passed it on to someone else, they modified it, they filtered it. So you really want to keep it short so there's less filtration, so to speak. So these are the four C's. The three W's, what you want to say is who you are, what you do, and what is your value to the listener, okay? It's the value to the listener, what they perceive is the value that you could offer to them is what gets you the role or the position, okay? So here's your four C's and three W's. You know, your pitch really should be talking about a solution <clears throat> to problems. And once again, as I say, it, how will the listener benefit from working with you or engaging you? It's the value that they see and what you tell them is what gets you engaged by them. How many pitches do you need? My opinion, a minimum of six. They're going to say, how do you get six? The minimum. Well, look at it this way. <clears throat> I break it down into two sets. Each set has a 15-second pitch, a 30-second pitch, and then what I'll consider a 60 to 90-second pitch. Okay? Now, you might say 15 seconds. I can't say anything in 15 seconds. Well, let me tell you something. If I saw it, my clock right now, that's 15 seconds, everyone. It's longer than you think. You'll see as we go further on what I'm talking about. Now, the two sets, <clears throat> as I say, each set has a 15, 30, and a 60 to 90. Set one is for people in your profession or your industry. These are the people who know what you do. These are the people who speak the language that you speak, okay? If, you know, in accounting, you know, we talk about you know, SEC reporting, 10Ks, 10Qs, S1s, S8s, okay? We talk about SOX, okay? We also talk about FOX with those who uh, haven't heard that term, it's factory overhead expense. So we talk about these things, ROI, et cetera. We know that jargon. We understand what it's all about. You say the same thing to a person who's not an accountant or is it set two, and you start talking about 10Ks, 10Qs, S1s, SA, Sox, Fox, deer in the headlights, everybody. They will have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, blank stare, like, what is that person talking about? The same thing, you know, if, if you're in IT, and you're talking to other IT people, you know, you're going to be talking about the catch. You're going to be talking about, you know, the, uh, the database management. You're going to talk about, you know, the bits, bytes, all these other great things, uh, lands, WANs, okay? People are going to, what are you talking about if they're not in technology, okay? Well, the people in set two, when you address these individuals, you have to speak to them in the terms that they would understand. And you have to really generalize it. 
So if I was going to talk to someone in the accounting industry, well, tell me what you do. I could tell them, well, I work with companies in preparing their 10Ks, their 10Qs, or S1s to help them evaluate their operations. If I was asked the same question by someone who is not an accountant, I would say, what I do is that I prepare reports that are submitted to the Securities and Exchange Commission for a company to show the company's profitability and the results of their operations. I'm saying the same thing, but it's different to different people. And so therefore you need two different types of pitches okay, for different sets. Now what you can do, you can make in set one, a 15, a 30, and I'm gonna say a 60, 90 pitch to talk about the same thing. And what you do, in my opinion, you start off by writing the longer version. And then when you practice it, you will find that the written word and the spoken word are different. So what you have to do is cut out some of the words or your cadence and how you speak can be speeded up or slowed down or emphasized in different areas. And so you could cut it down from 60 seconds down to 30 seconds. And then you could cut it down even further from the 30 second version to the 15 second version. It's always easier to reduce than to add. So you'd have the same pitch, but you'd have different versions of it. The 60 seconds, the 30 seconds, the 15 seconds. And you have it for these two sets. Okay, so that's why I say you need at least six. The pitch consideration, well, it's always geared to the audience, remember that. And so you have to know your audience, okay? You have to know, is this an audience of people who are non-professional in my industry or are they in my industry? It then tells you how to speak to them. What you want to convey to them in either group, you want to do your likability. You want people to feel that you know, they like you, you know, you're, they're very friendly. Okay. You want to have in their minds confidence that from what you say and how you say it, that you can get the job done. What you're saying is that they feel that you can get it done for them. You want them to trust you. You want them to believe in what you say. Now, how's the best thing to do that? Well, if you add to your pitch some way to validate what you're telling them, it then creates further trust and confidence. And I'll show you some of that as we go through it. And obviously you wanna create or convey value, that you offer value to the people if they would engage with you. Those are the keys. In doing all this, you pitch, you wanna tell a story that lets the listener relate to their wants and their needs. And that's by knowing the listener, who they are. Your delivery, you want to make it natural. You don't want to make it robotic. I cannot tell you how many times I've been to networking groups and even on Zoom, I could tell when somebody's reading off their pitch. There's a robotic type style, okay? You just really have to relax when you do this and you know, make it a conversation. How do you create your pitch? Well, many people ponder this and many people spend a lot of time doing this. What am I gonna say? How am I gonna say it? What should I include? What should I do? Well, 
we got the three W's. You know, tell the listener who you are. What is your product or your service? And why they need to hear more from you. <clears throat> These are the main the main things you want to put into it. You will add other items, but these are the main the three main things you want to convey to somebody. You want to discuss your purpose and not your skills. We have a habit of talking, well, we're really good in that, you know, we have leadership, we can do this, we have this technical expertise, we work with Excel, we work with PowerPoint, we work with access and databases. Okay. Question not so much what your skill set is, but what you do. What is the purpose that you're there? And what are the benefits you offer? Why should somebody engage you? Why will they be better off hiring you? than the person next to you. And as I say, you wanna give validated examples or you, know, you can do that through interesting stories and what would you have to say. And if you could provide evidence to the listener, they will have more confidence and more trust in you than just saying it. Okay. Um, what you could do at different times, if you look at your, re at your resumes that we've created, most resumes that I look at are really job descriptions. And that's a whole other subject. But if you look at your opening paragraph on your resume, your professional profile, and read what you, you wrote, and then ask yourself, how do people believe that I am, you know, an expert at this or highly experienced or uh, a leader, a group leader? How do they believe that? Okay, so think about that. What I like to do is keep it simple, everybody. Okay, and why I say keep it simple, have in your mind different concepts, main three on who you are, what you do, and why people should hear from you, and your main purpose and the value. And if you have that in your mind, at any time when someone asks you about yourself, you can tell them, and it doesn't have to be, you know, by rote, so to speak, you can just have a conversation and say what you're all about. So keep it simple so you don't have to memorize it. Okay. Here's some sample pitches, and I want to go through some of these, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm Scott, a senior project manager with a creative attitude to problem solving. My recent challenge has been to reduce company waste. I created a Lean Six Sigma training program, which reduced waste by over 500,000 annually. With the cost savings, the company was able to add sales staff, which increased revenue by over $3 million. Let's chat to see how I can help your company. Now let's break this down for a second. First of all, this pitch generally, it's between 15 and 17 seconds. And that's given on a, you know, a casual type of um, conversation. We're talking, who is he? He's Scott. Okay. Now, what does Scott do? He's a creative he has a creative attitude to problem solving. So he is a problem solver. Forget his title over here. Sometimes you could put your title, but it doesn't really mean that much because titles in certain companies can be the same title, but in different companies, it has different responsibilities. But here you have, here's Scott, 
a problem solver. Now, how do you know that? Well, at his last company, he reduced waste. There was a problem with waste. How did he do it? He used Six Sigma training program, which reduced it by over 500,000 annually. Well, that's pretty impressive. And with the cost savings, he was able to add staff and generated over $3 million in revenue. Now, if you are a listener at this point, think about it. Here's a guy who could solve problems. Well, he's telling you how he solved problems at his last place. Now, if you have problems and you want to increase revenue, he's now told you how he can do that for you. Does that create interest in your mind that you want to have a further conversation with him? You're looking now, okay, this is a benefit this guy has. He's created value in this company. Can he create value in my company based upon what he's done before? And he's inviting me to have another conversation with him so I could explore further situations where maybe he could tell me more information on where he could save me money and increase the value of my company. So he's covered this. Now, just look at it this way. Let's read this without identifying who he is. Hi. I'm a creative attitude, I'm a creative problem solver, okay? In my last company, I saved the organization $500,000 annually. With the cost savings, the company was able to add uh, sales staff that increased revenue by $3 million. Let's have a conversation, see how I can help you. Now, it's almost the same thing what we had before but I didn't mention who I am and what's going through your mind when you go through this. Do you really hear my message? Or are you thinking, who is this guy? And then you don't hear who my, my message is. You're trying to find out, who am I? So just think about that. We're gonna explore that a little further. I'll look at this one. Hi, I'm Marty. I'm a people helper and a matchmaker. What I do is that I teach, I advise, I support people in various disciplines in multiple industries in the techniques they need to have a successful job search campaign. Over 1,200 people have told me that through my coaching services, they landed the positions they always desired. If you don't have the position you always desired, Let's talk to see how I can help you. Okay, this is generally my pitch. Yeah. Now I'm telling you who I am. What I do, I teach, advise, and support people in the techniques they need to have a successful job search campaign. Well, it's great to say that. How do I prove that to you? How do I validate that? Well, over 1,200 people have already told me, this is a third party validation, that through my help, they land in the positions they want. And now I, I am inviting you to another meeting. So think about that. Let's have a further conversation. Here's a third example. I'm John. I am an innovator who makes it possible for business to improve their record keeping accuracy. By working with people in technology, I help maintain control over the course and deployment of systems delivering benefits to the organization. One of my clients improved record keeping accuracy by over 10% once I implemented blockchain for them. If you want a person to improve your transaction accuracy, we should have a conversation. Once again, this is 15 seconds. Now look what John has said. He's introduced himself, John, okay? And what does he do? 
He improves company record keeping accuracy. It's great to say that, but how has he done it? He tells you over here how he's done it. And here he's validating it with an example to say one of his clients improved the accuracy by 10%. And he tells you how he did it. So that validates what he could do for you. And if you want your accuracy improved, why don't you sit down and have a conversation with him? Okay. And this covers the different pieces. Now, in delivering a pitch, this is what's important. When a person first delivers a pitch, the listener, meaning you, the audience, where their mind is, 55% of their thought process initially, what their concentration is when I first give you a pitch, is not what I, I am going to tell you. It's how I look, okay? It's how I look. 55% of you, when I start speaking, are sizing me up. How tall am I? Do I wear glasses? What color is my hair? What's my body shape, et cetera, et cetera. 38% of my thought process is going to the tone of how I speak, how I emphasize what I'm talking about. Am I shouting? Am I quiet? Am I delivering a situation where you can hear me and understand me? And only 7% initially is what I have to say. Just look at that. My message initially, I'm saying just initially, is 7%. So what do you have to do to combat this? Because you want to have some, you want people to listen to what you have to say, but you want to have your message you know, resonate with people. Well, you want to have good enunciation and emphasis on key points that you will talk about. You want to have a certain pace and cadence in delivering your pitch. What I suggest you do, and some of these are when, you know, we went back with live presentation, so to speak, live meetings, but you could also do it from when you sit in front of your computer for um, these Zoom meetings. Take a, a comfortable position, okay? Whoops. Limit the way you move, okay? What I mean, don't dance around, not all over here, back. Take one position, stand, have a well-balanced, smile, and just relax. What you want to do if you're sitting in a chair, lean forward, lean into the screen. If you look on what your television shows, your news especially, the newscasters who are at the desk, the anchors, you will see they're not way back in their seats like this. They're always at the edge of the seat, leaning forward into the camera. And that's what you want to do. And, you know, body language is really important on how you look. You could also use your hands, okay, to emphasize it's very big or it's really, we have to really focus on something. So by using your hands, you could really emphasize your message. And then what happens on coming back to this situation, you want to get your message across. So what you want to do, say your name first. Like we said, you know, I'm Scott. And then pause. Pause about, you know, two, maybe three seconds. Just enough so people could get over this initial reaction, this 55, 38, 7. So by saying your name up, first, up front and pausing, you are covering most of this. Okay? And then what you do then you go into your message. That's when you start and talk about what you do. And now they're concentrating on what you have to say. 
and use your hands and your arms. You know, everything above the waist is the best way to do it. Um, when we are meeting, you know, face to face, you could really extend your arms up and talk and make it really wide. Here we are somewhat limited on Zoom to the screen. Look and face the group. If you're in a group, and you do what I call the 15 second pause. And this takes a while to do, to learn. And what I mean, picture a crowd in a, like an amphitheater type situation. And what you wanna do when you start, you start at one end and you talk to the people this way, choose one person in the crowd, focus on that person and speak to that person for a little while. And then, Turn to the middle, make that pause about five seconds. Then Todd started speaking to this one person here in this center section. Emphasize that you're focusing on that one person. And then after a couple of you know, moments, then turn to the other group. And five seconds started speaking to them. And then what you could do then you could come back to the center. And then what you could do, you could go over to the other side. Well, then you could come over here for a couple of seconds. But every time you do it, it's a distinct motion and you hold people's attention for at least five seconds. And by doing that, what happens when I speak to one person over here, I'm focusing on one person in this area, Everyone around them is feeling that I'm speaking directly to them because I am focused in this area. And then when I move here to talk to the people here, these people out over here are now following me over here. And they still believe I'm talking to them, but now this group feels I'm talking to them. And then when I focus over here, the group travels with me over here. And now this group now I am speaking directly with them. And then when I come back here, the group's following me. You do not want to do what I consider is the oscillating fan motion. And what I mean by that, you do not pause and you just start in talking like this and keep on moving your head back and forth and just talk to the group back and forth. And if you do not focus on one person, it's like the oscillating fan. It's just moving. And people are not going to pay attention to you. So it's the five second hold that grabs people's attention. And then what you want to do at the end, repeat your name. So this repeating your name overcomes the 58387. You're going to say, well, I'm repeating my name. Well, that's okay. Because many people, when you first stated your name, they didn't pay attention. They were looking at how you look and what your tone was. But if they are uh, accustomed to being at networking group meetings, they might have heard your name when you first stood up. And you say it at the end, that's okay. It's repetition. For those people who are there really at the beginner, as a beginner, and they don't hear your name per se, then they hear it at the end. But say your name up front, because if you do not, as we've seen with Scott, if I don't say Scott, I'm Scott. Okay, during the conversation, my message, you keep on wondering, who is this guy? Who is he? He hasn't identified himself. Okay, so keep that in mind. You know, in mind, what I'd like to do here, these are the things that you should be uh, using when you con construct a pitch. You want to indicate who you are. And once again, who do you help or who do you serve your purpose? What can you do for the listener? What results can the listener expect by working with you? How do you or others substantiate your value? And you want to make it conversational. 
Okay. Now we're at a point where we have time. I like to do some, what I'll call it group participation. Hopefully you all have your pads and pens and pay, pencil by you. I'm gonna leave this screen up. And what I'd like you to do, I'm gonna give you three minutes and I will do a countdown at 90 seconds because as I said, your longest pitch should be 90 seconds. And I'm going to ask you to use this type of format to create an elevator pitch. Or you could use your current elevator pitch if you want to continue with that. And I'm going to go through this. And then what I'd ask you to do, maybe we could have some volunteers to give us their elevator pitch that they've just constructed. So if we start now, I'll let you know when there's 90 seconds left. Ninety seconds left. Sixty seconds left. Thirty seconds left. Fifteen seconds. Five, four, three. Two, time's up everybody. Put down your pencils. As my instructor used to say in college, close your blue books. And let's get settled. Okay. Any feedback? what do you think? Yeah, three minutes. Do I have any volunteers who wanted to give their pitch? I'm willing to. Who wants to do it? I do Jonathan. want to do it, Marty. Jonathan, Jonathan Rothy is my name, so. Go ahead. Fire away or? Fire away. Fire away. I'm a senior tax executive with diverse background in tax strategy, planning, tax compliance, accounting and other areas. My prior employer, Adian, 
successfully formed a tax planning and strategy group of seven people, and we successfully met effective tax rate targets in the range of 10 to 12 percent per year. I could do the same for your company. Okay, Jonathan. Anybody have any comments? Go easy on me. We'll go easy. I appreciate you participating. Thanks a lot. Tell of us, he didn't tell us who he was. Thank you, Kevin. That's number one. John, you just jumped into it. Okay. Anybody no, else? Little, can I ask a question on that? Wasn't that what I was doing when saying an experienced tax executive? I kind of thought that's telling me who I was. What am I missing there? Your name. Oh, People I like to identify that. your name. Gotcha. I got it. Okay. 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 Anybody else? Yeah, he, he, John, you need to ask for the next meeting or the next conversation at the end. Good point. Okay, anybody else? How about the message? Do we understand what Jonathan had to say, what he does? Tax people or non-tax people? You understand what he said? As a non-tax person, I didn't understand what he said, what he does. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. John, I think you got some good feedback. Okay. Lesson learned. But thank you very much for participating. I appreciate it. Do we have anybody else? There is somebody else. Here's Bill. Bill? Go ahead. Hello, I'm Bill Velasco. I am a global financial executive and I help global companies develop and implement key initiatives to grow and expand their businesses. I was recognized after the uh, acquisition of companies in Europe, Asia Pacific and the Americas, as well as Greenfield operations. If your organization is expanding internationally, I can help you identify the opportunities and develop a plan to grow in that direction. How do you think I can help your organization? Again, this is Bill Velasco. Thank you very much, Bill. Any questions? Any comments? Well, uh, it's because I have two comments to Bill. Uh, first is I, I didn't hear any, any specific accomplishments that prove what you've done before. And the second is you mentioned in that direction and that that direction was not actually explicitly defined before. So it's a little bit vague. That's my subjective opinion. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Well, Bill, I, I think you covered most of it. You need a, you know, a little different uh, you know, as mentioned to, you know, uh, clarify what you had to say. One thing that stuck out in my mind, we said, you know, you're uh, a global executive. Okay. Um, I was like, well, what does that mean? Okay. I, I think what happens if you would just say some of the stuff you, you did without putting in, so, so to speak, a title, I think it would really, uh, I think it would benefit you from that standpoint. But thank you for your participation. Really appreciate it. You've covered a lot of other things. You asked for a meeting, you gave your name twice, which was really good. All right, um, let's see, Joyce. Joyce. Oh, yes, Marty, yeah. I know you're, so, you're busy writing. Your I wasn't text. asleep, really. I, I, yeah, just... I, I got it. Do we have any questions? Um, I don't see any. No questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions then? Shout it out now. Come on. Marty, Tommy Hill, I have one. Marty, Hi, could Tom. you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Question. You know, I want to go back to um, six different elevator pitches. And again, I, I hear it loud and clear. You have to, to, to build it depending on who you're speaking with from a professional side. But at the same time, should I have flexibility in highlighting multiple versions of what I've done? 
because what I've done is I've closed global contracts. I have transformed $2 billion organizations. Should I include them in the same pitch or keep them separate? Let's come back to one of the things that I said. You want to keep it simple, right? And then you want to target it to your listeners. Based upon your information on the listeners, <clears throat> I think you know you have to target it accordingly, which means you would change it. Okay. <clears throat> That's why I try to keep it simple. <clears throat> Excuse me, because different people look at it, have different needs. And that's why I'm saying to keep the concepts in your mind on what you want to say and not necessarily memorize it. Because if you have the concepts in your mind, then you could insert different things, uh, different, you know, call it uh, different purposes that you've done, okay, based upon the needs of the listener. So hopefully I answered that. I think I've clarified it for you. You yeah, have. Thank you. You know, okay. So that's how you can do it. And that's why keeping it simple really helps you um, adjust accordingly real quickly without stumbling. You have in your mind, these are some of the things that I've done. And based upon the listener, I can tell them about this, this, and this. Good question. Really good. Anybody else? Marty? Yes. Hi, this is Jen. Um, a quick, uh, question about uh, your mention of uh, the importance of including purpose and value. Can you give an example of the difference as it, well, as it relates to the benefit to the other person? Because, go ahead. Well, no, it's just that you, you can, when you, when you look at it, my, my purpose, the purpose that I do, the, the things that I, I accomplish, okay, that purpose, what I do is that, let's say, I turn around companies. That's what I do. Now, if you are an organization that has been suffering, okay, and needs turnaround, that's going to resonate with you that this is what I do. Okay. So I would say, I'm Marty Latman. What I do is that I come, I make companies more profitable. I help organizations that need to be need improvement. I turn them around to become more profitable. If your company is not meeting its expectations and wants to increase its value, let's have a conversation. Okay. So I talk over there that what I do is that I fix companies. The purpose that I have is to make them more profitable and I turn them around. Okay. As opposed to saying, well, what I do is that I work quite a bit with different financial statements to analyze the statements and then based upon the analytical results I have, pinpoint the areas that need improvement and then turn them around, okay? So there's a subtlety involved, but I'm not talking so much about my skills. I'm talking about what I do. Did, did that clarify what you're looking for? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Now's your opportunity, everybody. One going once. I'm Marty. This is John. I'm. I was. I've been trying to to develop my non-professional resume. I mean, pitch because I was working on my professional pitch over the last few days. So I don't know. I'm not really done, but I could try it if you want. Yeah, go ahead. Shoot. All right. Um, so I'm going to treat this as not everybody here is in finance. So I'm just going to treat it like a, you know, generic, like a network. Go ahead, John. Network. All right. Um, my name is John Bonifacio. Thank you for your time today. Um, I am a commercial banking relationship manager, and I've been doing pretty much the same thing for the last 28 years, which is building, rationalizing, and most importantly, growing relationships and commercial banking portfolios. During my last job, as an example, I was hired to build a new 
uh, portfolio in the Midwest portfolio where my employer had didn't have a single client. Um, I did this by effectively doing whatever it takes, knocking on doors, networking, cold calling, uh, et cetera. Um, and uh, in the end, after just two years, I was able to build a portfolio from nothing to $5 million per year in, in annual profitability, uh, which, is, which was pretty good. And that included seven large relationships and, and also included two of the largest hospital system relationships in the state of Michigan and Ohio. Um, you know, um, uh, stop with the arms. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it there. I, you know, my yeah, name let, is John. Let's cut, let's cut it there, John. Let, let's just. Uh, start I, I was just gonna say, my name is John Bonifacio. If you know any commercial banks that want to grow client relationships and portfolios, please keep me in mind. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right, everybody. Anybody have any comment? Do you know what John does? How many people know what John does? He's a bank relationship manager. What does that mean? Hello? Do we still have people on the call? Yes. <laughs> Just want to check. Okay. I, I might not have had, might not, mustn't have been a big impact. No. It, it, it's good as well. My, my quick, my, my quick two cents. A very, very good presentation. Of, uh, I would just say that it's it needs more polishing to make sure that it's um, it's it's clear it's not repetitive and so you don't say the same things twice. But overall, it says more or less captures everything Marty has proposed so far. Okay, some of the things you got. I appreciate your comment, John. You know, it's I think what you have to do, you have obviously tightened it up and you're working on it because it was way too long. And there was a couple of things that you said in there where you said, uh, um, you know, you did something that, you know, in my mind, it's really good, all right? Um, that's in your mind, but then you got to substantiate it. You could eliminate, I thought it was pretty good by just saying what the numbers are and what you accomplished, okay? You have to tighten it up, um, obviously practice it, but when you tighten it up and make it more succinct, Okay, you'd be better off. You, yours went, you know, quite a bit. It was over ninety seconds when you got through it. Right? So that's something to work on. And you heard what everyone else had to say here, or the, the comments that we've had. So um, I think you're on your way in doing it. It's just a matter of clarifying some of the things and reducing some of the stuff where you're taking self praise and you let the the results stand for itself. Okay, John, we'll talk some more. Okay. Thank you. All right, everybody, let me just wrap it up here. You know, let, let's talk about the pitch itself. Once again, what is it? It's a short, persuasive speech that introduces yourself. It could promote your product, company, or an idea. The pitch will have its four C's and three W's. Okay. Um, there's different times required different pitches depending on the environment that you're in. The delivery method is extremely important on how you deliver your pitch. What you have to do, <clears throat> keep on practicing it. Make it so, you know, Tom pointed out, you want to be able to interchange different concepts based upon the audience. And you want to be able to just slide that in, okay, and feel natural on how you do that. And that's based upon practice, on how you want to you know, say your message, so to speak. Okay. I want to leave you with the following. Just I always talk about these things. I want to talk about networking is as simple as ABC. Always be connected and connecting. Okay. Connect to new people all the time, all the time. At the same time, stay connected with people in your network. ABP, everybody, always be positive. Negative and depressed people do not get hired. And what you always have to do is be prepared for the opportunities. You never know when it's going to happen. It could happen very rapidly. It could happen when you least expect it. 
So be prepared to deliver your pitch at yeah. any time. And remember, the two most important words you should carry with you, okay, I think it's not only when you're in search, but it's in life, it depends. Those are two most important words because what happens is that your actions, are really you have to think strategically and your actions are based upon okay, what has been laid out in front of you, the circumstances, and the surroundings, okay, that are set before you. And so you have to think creatively and you have to think really um, strategically on what has to be done next and how to do it. So keep these in mind. These, this is my um, information. As I say, I will send this whole deck out to everybody which you should, you know, probably tomorrow. What I will do is that I will also send out with it, um, I will send out to you the list of people who were here. Please use the list to increase your network and meet, you know, speak to other people here who are on the, the call, get to meet them, introduce yourselves, get to know who they are, okay? Because let's face it, you know, in networking, you know, part of it is to, you know, get to know people. That's part of it, obviously. But more important is to get to know people who get to know you. Because if they get to know you, they can have their eyes and ears open when they hear other opportunities that may be good for you. But if they hear the opportunities and they don't know things about you, that will just drift off into space. So when people get to know about you, they can help you too. And just think, you know, with the people we have on the phone, if everyone here can get to know everybody and see how many other people here could help you in your search. All right, everyone, listen, uh, I'm here to help you. All right, we do this every Monday. Learn with Latman. I'm available, you know, anytime you could give me a call. Um, more than happy to give you advice to help you if you want me to coach you. More than happy to coach you. I discount people who are in the fang if you want to engage me. Um, but I'm here to help no matter what. Uh, the Bergen meeting, the Bergen Fang meeting will be held on this Wednesday night at 6.30. Please sign up if you have not already at the FANG website under the Bergen chapter page. Um, John Hadley will be speaking. John is really, really good on what he has to talk about on you know, interviewing and will help you out in today's environment on remote interviewing, okay? Um, one last time, any further questions? Anybody? No? Okay, now what we'll do before we leave, if you go down to the chat, click on the chat at the bottom of your screen, you will now have a big um, drop-down box. It'll tell you, you know, what's been going on. It'll have the last one, it'll say two. Sometimes it'll say everybody, somebody who might be the last person you communicated with. And all the way over to the right, shadowed is three dots. Take your mouse over those three dots. You'll see the word more. Click on more. You now have a drop down box, which will say save chat. Click on that. You're back into the main chat box and over on the right, it says show in folder. If you click on that, it'll show you where the chat has been saved on your computer. The chat is in text format. You could read it in text format or if you want, you then could convert it into Word. And um, you could read the chat, contact the people here and get to know what other people do increase your network everybody all right um thank you very much for spending the time with me today hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you will benefit from it um what we'll do next monday 
is another Learn from Latman series. Um, and we will talk, as I said before, on ageism exists. How to <clears throat> deal with it successfully. A big topic. A lot of people, you know, are concerned about it today's environment, understandably. And um, I'll address it head on, as I think you should in the future. Okay. With that said, I, I have to say, as Roy Rogers used to say, <laughs> as he would end his show with Dale Evans, happy trails to you until we meet again. Be safe, everybody. Stay Thank healthy. You, we'll Thanks see you next week.